Hello guys, thank you for joining me here today, and today we are going to be reviewing Dr. Z Wait a second, let me see what it actually is. It is Dr. Zekko Nike, and uh, in most of his videos he's really respectful of uh, every religion I have seen him uh, talk on anyway. Uh, every, he's really respectful of every religion he talks on. So I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I just don't agree with his points, and I will see see you in the rebuttal. But uh, stop. I want to hold you for long. My name is Sebastian. My faith is Christian. Okay. So I I would like to ask and you. And your profession, please. My profession. I am working as an accounts manager in a telecommunication company in Riyadh. Okay. So, I am very much happy to be here and heard your speech. You have started with the similarity of the religions and from the speech you have told to find out the hundred percent of the faith. So, from your speech I came to the conclusion that Islam is the hundred percent faith to be followed. So I would like to ask you that can you clearly emphasize about the hundred percent of Islam? This is the only question I have. Thanks. I actually do promise that I uh, did not edit that so he is got a week like this. No, he legitimately talks like that. Um, just in case you were wondering, uh, if I was trying to make Islam look dumb, uh, he's not dumb, obviously. Obviously, he doesn't speak English, um, majority of the time. I just wanted to tell you that I did not do that, and you can look, uh, go look up the original video if you want to go and look that up. Uh, just because a lot of people would be on, uh, my case if I didn't say that. They'd be like, you, that, 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 I'm sorry, I had to, but I love the guy anyway, he seems like a sincere person looking for truth, and uh, in this he kind of gets deceived and kind of doesn't get anything apart from, and, and I want to give you the opportunity to watch this video for yourself, so again, the uh, link is in the, the description below, and um, yeah, uh, Dr. Zen Zenker does not give really any Evidences for Islam apart from a verse in the Quran, um, but we'll tackle this when it comes to it. Thank you, thank you. The brother said that he heard the lecture, and he has come to the conclusion that Islam is hundred percent the true religion. Alhamdulillah, and he wants me to clarify openly. But naturally, since it's interfaith dialogue, taking out the commonalities. I say, submit your will to Almighty God, the same way the chief editor said, don't you finally say Islam is the only right religion? I said, no, I say, submitting your will to Almighty God is the right religion. Because sometimes Islam may not go down the throat, the word Muslim will not go down the throat. So I say, submitting your will to Almighty God is the right religion. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's the right action. But it's not a religion. A religion is an idea, ideology, sometimes an ideology like uh, Islam. But at the same time, it is uh, religion is an ideology. It's a way you live, not something you do. That's more of a, a group, that, a segregated group you support or or you more, not support that you uh, would identify yourself. Um, labeled onto that group. So I would identify myself as a strategic Christian. Strategic just meaning investigated, uh, investigative, um, Christian basically. A strategic Christian is an investigative Christian that's not going to believe anything that's just said to them or any test that's just due to them or any Bible verse that's given to them. They're going to go into the Bible, read context, read the Greek, read the Hebrew, read the Aramaic to get them the actual translation 
if the Bible is in Aramaic at the time, so say in Daniel, half of it's in Aramaic, half in, half is in Hebrew, um, more for um, the fact that Aramaic was the speaking language of the day, the day that the language of the people, basically, which means like English is now. Uh, so I'm not going to go into all the history of Ar Aramaic and the, the language of the people, but um, what I am going to say is uh, basically it is not a it's not a religion. It is an I it's not an ideology. It is an action. If you want to submit your life to God, you submit your life to God. A religion is something you um are labeled as. So But if you want to say clearly an almighty God clearly mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number nineteen, in the Dina in the Lail Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is Islam. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse number 85 that if anyone desires any other religion besides Islam, it will never be accepted of him. He'll be amongst the losers in the hereafter. So Islam, submitting a will to Almighty God is the only religion which is correct. Ah, uh, guy wally. Dolly, snolly dolly. My gosh. So... Everything he says in here is completely circular reasoning. It's completely look at the Quran because the Quran is true and what the Quran says is true and the Quran it's completely circular. So it's whatever the Quran says is true and the Quran says Islam is true, so that is true, meaning the Quran's true, meaning that the um, Islam must be true because the Quran says that Islam is true, meaning that the Quran must be true. But, yeah, it's, it's, oh, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I hate circular reasoning with them. Evidence. I mean, there's evidence for Christianity to be true. There's evidence for the flat earth to be true. And again, I will push this on you as much as I have to. I'm working on a series right now that hopefully I can get out on Jesus now. Uh, actually, now I've ch changed the name, uh, which I need to change on YouTube to Yoshua now. Uh, mainly because of my beliefs that... My, mainly, not even my beliefs. It's more of a pronunciation thing. But I have a conviction more so to talk on... Yeshua, but I don't want to make this about Yeshua at the moment. I want to make this more about uh, Islam. So, here's a fact. Just a quick little fact. Islam believes in Islam. The teaching is that Jesus is the son of Mary. The son of Mary. Not the son of Joseph. And they even say Jesus was born of a virgin. Isa bin Meriim. Jesus is the son of Mary. Yeshua is the son of Mary. Right, so all through um, Islam, you you see this, and you they get caught on a hook through science, through actual science, satiric science, which we can go and do if we have the time, if we want to, if we want to go learn about this kind of science and this kind of biology, we can go do this. Okay, we can go study this. The male, uh, the, the the blood. I I need to say this properly. The blood type, I believe it is, it could just be the blood in general, but the blood type comes from the male, alright? So, you cannot have the female give the blood type. Now, Jesus obviously had blood, he died on the cross, he got crucified, although they didn't believe that. He obviously had blood because everybody on this earth has blood. Now, in saying that, who gave him the blood if Joseph didn't? This means Mary, if Mary is a virgin, Mary could not conceive Jesus, firstly, if it did not come from God. So, in there, right off, it's the Son of God. He's the Son of God. You, you cannot get away from it. But if you want to push even further, this is for any Christian, by the way, or any, um, any atheist as well. Uh, if you're an atheist, you could use this to dismember Islam. It does. It really divides the whole belief on Islam, either they have to say Jesus was not the Son of God, which makes him a lie, which makes him not a prophet, meaning that the Quran is a lie, because it says clearly in there he's a prophet, or he's the Son of God in the Christian Bible, at least the Christian Bible is true, at least. Um, so the blood comes from the male, and so from the father, I, I like to use father better because it, it illustrates my point. Um, so, if the blood came from God, 
either if you change Miri's, um, I don't know, cellular thing to be able to give the blood type or whatever, meaning she was a sort of a trinity, which again they're against, or God, which I'm against too by um, anyone who thinks I'm not, or God gave him the blood, making him his son. So either way, he's a son. So you cannot get away from that. So either you have to call Jesus a lie, which makes the um, Quran a lie for calling him a prophet, or you have to, or you have to accept he's the son of God. Either way, you have to go, uh, you have to throw away the the whole teaching of Islam altogether. That is a fundamental thing: is Jesus is not the son of God. If Jesus is the son of God, Christianity is right. At least, at least Christianity is right. Or you have to go to atheism. If you don't want to believe that, you have to go to atheism or you have to go to Christianity. So atheists should use this too. Let's keep going. And all the prophets of Almighty God taught only this. Now, brother, I'm asking you the question that do you agree Islam is the best religion? No, they didn't. And no, it's not. Do you accept Islam? No, that I have to think it over. Do you believe there's one God? I believe in one God. Do you believe that God has got no images? Yes, there is no, no image other me. than single God. Single God. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final that, messenger? That's a thing which I have actually want to ask you because as per our faith, my faith which I am practicing now, Jesus is the last uh, prophet. Number one, Jesus is not a prophet, he's the son of God. And number two, he's not the last prophet at all because he clearly states there's going to be more prophets and you'll see that in a second and uh, Dr. Zakir actually says this but he twists it and he twists it so it's so small he twists it at but he still twists it and it's such a good tactic if you want to dismiss Christianity uh, our faith people's where did, us. that's the reason I, why I I'm asking I'm, about the hundred percent. I'm not talking what your religious priest has told you. Uh -huh. Can you point out one verse in the Bible which says that Jesus Christ is the last messenger? No, the, I am not uh, uh, by heart at the Bibles. I am a student of comparative religion. There is not a single verse in the Bible saying that Jesus is the last messenger. In fact, I quote it to you. Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. <laughs> okay, so he twists it, he makes tweaks to it. Uh, and of course, this verse does say what it, he just said, that basically he will provide... Uh, the spirit, who, uh, and he will uh, basically talk with all of our authority. He will only want God, basically, and it's like that. He'll teach the truth. He'll teach the, everything like that. But when he's saying this kind of stuff, he's not talking about a specific person at all. In fact, you see what he talks about here. Oh, uh, when he talks about the Holy. Spirit, the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. And strong, uh, so firstly, I'm going to go to John 14 to 26 to rectify what he's saying. And it says in there, and, and this is just from the Del Rams version, so if you've got another version, you're probably not going to hear this one. You're probably going to see Helper or Comforter or Consoler, but at the moment, I, got, I like Del Rams, so. But the, uh, the, but the paraclete, uh, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you all uh, bring all things to your mind. Whomever shall I have said to you. In fact, this completely is exactly the same verse as it says. And and he says in, in, in this video that if he's a study of religion, well, if he knows this verse, then he is purposely being deceitful. He is perfectly, uh, purposely deceiving people because it says in John 14, 26, but the uh, paraclete, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Firstly, that's my first thing. And, and then you go, he will teach you all things. Exactly what it says in the other thing. 
and bring all things to your mind. Whosoever I shall have said to you. The word there uh, for the paraclete, which I was more of um, more interested in, was paakletos, which means advocate, intercessor, a consoler, a comforter, a helper, a counselor. Or if you want to go back to the the root, it actually means the one who calls the shots, basically the one who who the one who makes the decisions. Um, so, I mean, it clearly, it clearly says in John who the, he is in, um, uh, in, in verse, uh, in chapter 16, verses 12 to 14. It clearly states who the he is in that, because it is exactly, explaining exactly the same thing. He will teach you all things, talking about the Holy Spirit. And bring all things to your mind. Whosoever shall I have said to you. It's not talking about a person. We all think this is talking about a person. But it's not. It's not talking about any person. It's talking about the Holy Spirit. So I just refuted that. And uh, Mr. Doc, oh, whatever, Dr. Zakur, please go and read the Bible. And if you're not being intellectually dishonest, at least go and read it. If you're not being into, um uh, intellectually deceitful and deceitful, des uh, deceiving, please go read it because it's going to change your mind. If you just glazed over that verse, go watch it. I hope someone gives this as a uh, Dr. Zaker too because I love him. I want him to be a brother in Christ. I want him to come to Christ. And uh, so if he watches this video, maybe he might. I mean, maybe not, but maybe it might give him questions as well because <laughs> he seems to contend in this religion that is clearly a fable an imaginary book it clearly states that Muhammad basically raped a nine year old and he married a six year old the same girl he married at six years old I mean given he only he waited uh, around about three years to rape her but he still raped her if not out of consent then at least um he at least uh, raped her, um, what's the word? Um, he, he, she was underage. Even back then she was underage. Even back then he would have been called a pedophile. Back then the legal age to marry, the proper age to marry, I should say, was more so 14 or 13, actually. Um, because you became a man or a woman at that time. And, um, so, he could have only waited another, to at least have an okay marriage, he should have waited another few years. At least another four. But, uh, he didn't. Anyway, keep going. Now, who is the spirit of truth? Which religious personality has praised Jesus Christ besides Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Who? And... Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, peace be upon him, by name, no less than 25 times. I mean, for the second most important prophet, I think 25 times is very small. Now, I mean, I don't know how many times other prophets uh, of the Quran are mentioned, but I know that 20 time, 25 times is not many. So, um, you got me there. So, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is talking about a messenger to come. And this messenger is no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. And as you saw, he made no attempt to prove the Quran true, to even make his argument near okay. Firstly, to be able to use the Quran as a fact, Firstly, you have to prove the Quran is true. Same with the Bible. Same with any religion. If you want to prove any fact that comes out of that book, you firstly have to prove that that book is true.
and it's, it's not just a historical book, but it's absolutely 100% the divine word of God. And if you want to go and see how you can do that, go to, I will leave a link in the description below to this person as well. Go to um, this guy called um, Mike Winger. He, at the moment he's doing a series, he's up to 10, uh, uh, he's up to part 10 of a series. And uh, that is evidences for the Bible or something like that. Or, or yeah, evidences for the Bible. And it's basically how you know the Bible is true, and it's not this, not this um thing of you know how people go the Bible is true because it's God's word and because it's God's word the Bible is true. It's not that kind of argument. It's an argument based in factual, evidential, historical um things. Please go look at it. It is an amazing series. I'll send you the first video, and if you want to go watch the videos after that, just go to his channel. Click on his, um, on his channel link, and uh, you can go see that. Uh, the first video is basically just just an outline of what he's going to be talking about and showing you that other religions don't live up to what the Bible lives up to. So, I mean, just go look at it. It's, it's an interesting um, series, and... I hope you learn a lot from that. But I'll see you next time. But until then, stay safe, guys. And as always, I'll see you next time. But until then, stay safe, guys. <laughs> I mean. <laughs>